Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital. I'm back with another video. In the last video, I broke down this preset called Music Box that I made as part of the Bitwig Factory set. And I showed you how I made a mechanical clock sound by triggering the playback of three different samplers using an LFO. And in this video, I want to break down what you can do when you start to trigger the sampler really quickly up into audio rates. I had a couple of requests to do some more content about the sampler, so I'm happy to oblige that. Um, I might do, even do another video after this one, and there's also some videos I've done in the past about the sampler and what it can do. So um, I'll go ahead and put those in the description as well. Anyway, let's get into this. So yeah, let's explore this triggering idea a little bit more. Now, if you're familiar with the idea of putting like some some playing cards in your bicycle spokes. You know that if you run, uh, if, you, if you're pedaling faster, you're gonna get a higher pitch sound. And basically what we're doing with that is repeating the same sound at different rates. Uh, so the pitch of the, of the sound that is made by a spoke hitting a card isn't really changing in pitch, but the interval between those sounds is changing. Now, you can get something like that to work if you just do a loop. So if we're zoomed into one of these little clacks and we loop it, we get that sort of repeating thing, which you've probably seen before. And then if I shorten the length of the sample, we can get that sort of, that sort of sound, right? The problem is, is that that's not easily converted into key, pitches of keys or whatever, right? So this isn't the best way to do something like this if you want to um, design some sort of kind of a rip sound or kind of a pedal card sound. Uh, so what we can do instead is we're gonna get a phase device here. And we're gonna use an LFO just so that I can control exactly when it's going to trigger. And remember, triggers are on and off. So any signal that is above 0.5 will trigger it, and anything below 0.5 won't trigger it. So if we just use this ramp, it'll be uh, a little bit of time before it's triggered. If I use the square wave, though, it's going to uh, trigger immediately. Now, um, in order to be able to connect this whole process with pitch, I use this phaser because this phaser responds to pitch. So what I wanna do is take the output of this phaser and use it to drive this LFO. Now, I wanna make sure to remember to turn this all the way up and I wanna also remember to uh, put this on to hold so that it won't have its own clock interfering with what we're trying to do uh, here. Now take the output of that, plug it into here. Remember to turn this off so that it won't be triggered by key. And I, uh, if I want everything to start exactly when I hit the key, I want to turn this on. So now let's listen to what that sounds like. Let's get it more in there. There we go. So what's happening here is we're only getting to play a very, very small amount of the sample. So it's very much a pitched sound. Uh, it sounds just like a some sort of a synth or something. And this is modulating the sound and not changing the pitch because we're basically changing the shape of the waveform or how much waveform is being looped when, when I uh, change the pitch. So this is a pretty powerful sound design tool. And what we can do in addition is um, we can double the amount of the sample or triple or quadruple, the amount of the sample we're gonna play and that's gonna drop the pitch for us. So let's do that. So um, pretty fun, right? But what we can do is change the position that we're starting from and change the sound like that. 
get some kind of bug sound going on. We could even um, connect that playhead to a, a random generator here, a random LFO, and uh, just give it a little bit of English on there. And let's set this guy up a bit. So I want it to be continuous. Let's see what that sounds like. Now, um, when you're just wanting some really sweet, um, kind of noisy sound, uh, I'm going to turn this one off for now. Then this is pretty cool technique. It's going to be buzzy most of the time. But, you know, for me, I don't like that buzzing kind of sound. And the reason why that buzzing is happening, uh, let's look at the waveform here. Put in an oscilloscope. And this really helps me to, to visualize what's happening to be able to look into the oscilloscope. Now you can see as we change the pitch, where here's one of one section of loop and we can easily get like hard clips or just direct lines here that sound really buzzy and here, especially right here we're getting these hard clips. And that's not too bad, but when we move things around, it tends to pop and click and do some weird things like that. So it's not too hard to get rid of that sort of deal. And it just takes a little bit of creativity. What we're gonna do is put in a multiplier. And this is kind of like a, a, a voltage controlled volume knob, basically, if you can think of it that way. And we're going to use another LFO Let's duplicate this one. And we're going to plug this, oh, I'm sorry, no, we're gonna plug this into here and drive this one in the exact same way that we're driving the other one. But this time we're going to use a triangle wave instead. Now the output of this is gonna go into a shaper and hopefully this will all make sense to you by the time I'm done. So what, we, what we're actually kind of doing here is we're going to turn up this volume at the point in which we start a cycle, start a playback here, and then we're gonna turn it back down uh, right before we start a new one so that the, we won't get these harsh um, contrasts between the beginning and the end of the loop. So we're basically just kind of fading in the beginning of a cycle and fading out the end of the cycle. <clears throat> If we plug that right into this uh, kind of multiplier here, we can smooth out these kind of rough edges. Let's look at what that looks like and we can, uh, I'm gonna have to zoom out some here, I guess. So once we have this uh, all set up, now we have kind of a pretty powerful uh, synthesis engine, as it were, that can make some pretty unique sounds. Now uh, with this, sort of volume in and out ramp we have here, uh, we can kind of soften the sound and make it not so gritty, uh, but it's still gonna be plenty gritty, you know? Even in the lower registers, we have a lot of high frequency content because we're just repeating the same sample at certain intervals. Um, now, let's listen to it without the, the volume smoothing there. And then back. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah, pretty good. And then we can change the pitch here and kind of change the timbre, the timbre. And you can even see what's happening here. We're kind of elongating and compressing the the wave that we're, we're looping uh, really quickly. So... We can get a mellower sound by turning down the pitch, but of course it's not actually changing the pitch of the note we're playing. It's just changing the timbre. Of course we can envelope this and get, uh, you know, some fun stuff. 
Let's envelope it real quick and see what that sounds like. So fun, fun, fun. And of course, I'm going to turn it off for a second. When we change the pitch here, we actually change the pitch. We can go down into individual hits and go all the way up into really high frequencies. And you get that kind of squeaky door effect, right? And that's because when you are opening and closing a door, the sounds that are being made are the same sounds, just in different intervals. So there's a lot of things in um, in our world that do this sort of kind of bicycle spoke effect. Um, and so when we want to get that kind of a sound, we want to use this sort of a technique, which again is is kind of rare to be able to to do this particular thing in other synthesizers. I think uh, if I'm using Falcon, the granular synthesizer uh, in Falcon and lets me do stuff like this, but I find I have more control here uh, and I kind of like it. So if we're trying to do some sort of a bass sound, of course, uh, it's going to sound kind of thin in the lower registers here. So it's pretty easy to come in and just add like a sub oscillator, just give me you know, one of these guys and I'm going to add it into here. I think that should work. Yeah. So you can get the bass you need out of it and still get the grit um, from the bicycle spoke technique all in one go. And of course, if we want to, we can change the volume fade in, fade out of the kind of loop here by adjusting this. So anyway, really cool technique, um, fun to use, fun to play around with. Of course, it's really easy to slap, swap in different samples here. I'm just gonna throw another one in real quick. I don't know what this is, but yeah, it's weird. Let's try it out. Uh, move the... Thingy. Fun stuff. If we do turn pitch tracking on, let's see what that does. Uh, okay. So we can use pitch tracking and you can see the difference that makes. It, it, it's also kind of fun to use a little bit of pitch tracking. Maybe like 25% or something. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. You see, you see what you can, can do and it's pretty easy to set up. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll try to respond to them. And let me know if you want to see some more videos about some of the things you can do in a sampler because it's really, really powerful. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching. Bye.